Hello students. Have you ever imagined our planet without green forests, diverse wildlife, or chirping of birds? This is why conservation of plants and animals is essential for maintaining the delicate balance of life on Earth. In this chapter, Conservation of Plants and Animals, we explore the importance of biodiversity and how human activities harm it. Let's start by understanding what is deforestation. Deforestation is the large scale cutting down of trees to make space for human activities. It harms the environment by causing loss of biodiversity, destroying habitats, disturbing the water cycle, and leading to soil erosion. There are two types of causes of deforestation, natural causes. Natural causes include forest fires and extreme droughts that can rapidly devastate extensive forest regions. Man-made causes. Forests are cleared by humans for crops and their cultivation, for building houses and factories, using wood for making furniture and as fuel. Now, let us see the consequences of deforestation. Increase in temperature and pollution. Deforestation raises Earth's temperature and pollution levels and increases the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Groundwater depletion. Groundwater level is reduced due to loss of tree cover. Disturbance in natural balance. Deforestation leads to disruption in nature's equilibrium. Reduces rainfall and soil fertility. Increase natural calamities. Loss of trees lead to higher chances of floods and droughts. Global warming. Fewer trees mean less carbon dioxide absorption, resulting in high carbon dioxide in atmosphere. Trapped heat from carbon dioxide contributes to global warming. Water cycle disruption. Temperature rise affects the water cycle, leading to reduced rainfall and potential droughts. Deforestation causes soil degradation, changes soil properties, reducing humus and fertility, causes soil erosion by removing the top soil layer, results in desertification, converting fertile land into deserts. Let's explore the conservation of forests and wildlife. Preserving forests and wildlife is crucial for maintaining ecological balance safeguarding biodiversity and ensuring the overall health of our planet. Here, before diving into the ways to protect and conserve these vital natural resources, let's first understand two important terms, biosphere and biodiversity. Biosphere, the part of Earth that supports life and living organisms, includes land, water and air essential for the survival of living beings. Biodiversity refers to the variety of organisms on Earth includes their interrelationships with each other and the environment. To protect forests and animals, the government has created special areas like national parks, wildlife sanctuaries and biosphere reserves where nature is protected. Here are their definitions. Wildlife sanctuary, areas where animals are protected from any disturbance to them and their habitat. National park, areas reserved for wildlife where they can freely use the habitats and natural resources. Biosphere reserve, large areas of protected land for conservation of wildlife, plant and animal resources, and traditional life of the tribals living in the area. Let's now learn in detail about each of them, starting with biosphere reserve. Biosphere reserves are large protected areas designed to conserve biodiversity, including wildlife, plants, and animals, as well as the traditional lifestyle of indigenous communities. So it maintains biodiversity and ecological balance and preserves the culture of local communities. Biosphere reserves often include national parks and wildlife sanctuaries. For example, Pachmari Biosphere Reserve consists of one national park called Satpura and two wildlife sanctuaries known as Bori and Pachmari. Let's now understand the two terms flora and fauna. Flora, flora are the plants found in a particular area or region. Examples of flora of Pachmari Biosphere Reserve include sal, coral, teak, mango, jamun, sunflower, etc. Fauna, the animals of a particular region or area are termed as its fauna. Examples of fauna of Panchmari Biosphere Reserve are bluebull, barking deer, cheetah, leopard, wild dog, etc. Let's now learn about species and their types. 
Species is a group of population which are capable of interbreeding and have common characteristics. This means that the members of a species can reproduce fertile offspring only with the members of their own species and not with members of other species. Let's discuss two types of species, endemic species and endangered species. Endemic species. Endemic species are those species of plants and animals exclusively found in a particular area and not found anywhere else. Example, sal and wild mango are the endemic flora of Pachmari Biosphere Reserve. Bison, Indian giant squirrel and flying squirrel are the endemic fauna of this area. Endangered species, those animals and plants whose numbers are gradually decreasing and might get extinct soon are known as endangered species. Examples of some endangered animal species are snow leopard, giant panda, whooping crane, etc. Now, let's digress in detail about wildlife sanctuaries. Wildlife sanctuaries are the protected areas that provide protection and suitable living conditions to wild animals. Wildlife sanctuaries are places where killing or capturing of animals is strictly prohibited. People living in wildlife sanctuaries are allowed to do certain activities such as grazing by their livestock, collecting medicinal plants, firewood, etc. Some examples of wildlife sanctuaries in India are Periyar Wildlife Sanctuary and Saraskar Wildlife Sanctuary. National Parks. A national park reserve is large and diverse enough to protect the whole set of ecosystems. And what is an ecosystem? An ecosystem is made of all the plants, animals and microorganisms in an area along with non-living components such as climate, soil, river deltas, etc. So, National Park is diverse enough to protect entire ecosystem. National Parks preserve flora, fauna, landscape and even historic objects of an area. Sakthura National Park is the first reserve forest of India. The finest Indian teak is found in this forest. There are, there are more than 100 national parks in India. Some examples include Rajaji National Park and Jim Corbett National Park. Students, do you know about Project Tiger? Tiger is one of the many animals which are slowly diminishing. Project Tiger was launched by the government to protect the tigers in the country. The objective of this project was to ensure the survival and maintenance of the tiger population in the country. Satpura Tiger Reserve is unique in the sense that a significant increase in the population of tigers has been seen here. Now, what is Red Data Book? Red Data Book is the source book which keeps a record of all the endangered animals and plants. Red Data Book is maintained internationally by an organization. India also maintains Red Data Book for plants and animals found in India. Let's understand the term migration now. Some animals and birds travel to different places at certain times of the year. This is called migration. Migratory birds fly to far away areas every year during a particular time because of climatic changes. They fly for laying eggs as the weather in their natural habitat becomes very cold and inhospitable. Birds who cover long distances to reach another land are known as migratory birds. Recycling of paper. About 17 full-grown trees are required to produce one ton of paper. Paper can be recycled about five to seven times for use. We should save, reuse and recycle paper to save not only trees but also to save the energy, water and chemicals used to make paper. Let us see the last topic of this chapter, reforestation. Reforestation refers to the process of restocking destroyed forests by planting new trees. Ideally, the trees planted should match the species originally found in the forests. Importance of planting trees. It is recommended to plant at least as many trees as are cut down to maintain ecological balance. Natural reforestation. Reforestation can also occur naturally if deforested areas are left undisturbed, allowing the forest to regenerate without human intervention. Forest Preserving Act in India. This law focuses on preserving natural forests and ensuring that people living in or near forests can meet their basic needs sustainably. We hope that you have understood the topic. You can now study chapter notes, watch video lectures and solve MCQ tests of this chapter on Edulera to ensure you score well in your school exam. And that's not all. You also get amazing courses for maths, science, English, Hindi and much more for class 8. Thank you.